Have you heard about this recent case of Dr. John Forsythe, the wealthy surgeon and cryptocurrency founder who showed up dead in Beaver Lake? The case is still ongoing, but it's so crazy, I really wanted to share it with y'all. So, let's get into it. Hi folks, and welcome back. Thank you so much for spending time with me. If you're new here, my name is Delaney. I'm a true crime writer and all-around murder nerd. On this channel, I like to go into some of the worst cases, and I tend to cuss a lot. So, if that sounds like your idea of a good time, go ahead and subscribe. If not, that's cool. You do you. So, have you heard of this case? It's still pretty fresh, but there are so many twists and turns that I really wanted to talk about it with y'all. It started out on May 21st of this year, when Dr. John Forsyth went missing. He had texted his fiance that very morning and told her he'd be home soon, but he never came home and he didn't show up for his shift at Mercy Hospital in Cassville, Missouri, which is about 40 miles west of Branson. This was a huge red flag. In the 15 years he'd worked there, the 49 year old ER doctor had never called in sick or even showed up late. His coworker said he'd even come into work if, quote, his eyeballs were hanging out. So that's when they reported him missing. Apparently, the last time he was seen alive was on surveillance footage at the Cassville Aquatic Center, the public pool that was still closed for the season. According to his brother, Richard Forsyth, the surveillance video there captured him in his black infinity near the back of the property, near a waste facility, along with another car, a white SUV. This was around 7.15 a.m., right around the same time as his last text to his fiancée. Richard says the video shows the white SUV drive off about three minutes later, and then, about 15 minutes after that, John gets out of his car, walks around a bit, and then walks off. It's a little unclear, since the only information we have is from Richard, who's not only his brother, but also his business partner. The two had started a cryptocurrency business together, but more on that in a minute. So the police found his infinity unlocked with his keys, wallet, passport, and two phones inside. There didn't appear to be signs of a struggle. The police used drones and canine units to search in about a nine mile radius around the area, but they didn't come up with anything. They also searched his RV, which he kept parked in the hospital parking lot so he could sleep in between shifts. The RV was also unlocked and inside it were his laptop and two more cell phones. And again, no sign of a struggle and no clues as to where he might have gone. So of course, the next step in the investigation is to look at the people around him and what was going on in his life. So here's what I was able to find based on the public reporting. John was born in Idaho, the third of seven kids and spent most of his childhood in Canada before moving to Missouri. Records show he got his medical license from a medical school in Barbados. And after returning to the US to practice, he was sued for wrongful death a couple of times, but all the cases were settled out of court. And since I'm not in the healthcare field, I don't know if that's common for doctors to be sued for wrongful death. If you know anything about this, let me know in the comments. Anyway, all his coworkers and patients all said he was a really dedicated and caring doctor. So what about his personal life? He had been married twice before to the same woman. The two of them had eight kids together. Their last divorce had been finalized just days before he went missing. But everyone on his side and hers all said that their parting had been amicable. Right after his divorce was finalized and just three days before he went missing, he had proposed to his very pregnant girlfriend. Richard says that he had eaten dinner with John right around that time and said John told him he was the happiest he'd ever been. He had even made plans to go back to Idaho and Utah to visit family on May 22nd. So nobody thought he'd just up and left. The fact that he'd left all his money, vehicles, and passport behind pretty much eliminated that theory. Then, nine days after he went missing, a kayaker in Northwest Arkansas came upon a body floating in the water. It was soon identified as John Forsythe, and an autopsy confirmed that his cause of death was a gunshot wound to the face. It's important to note that the spot where he was found, near the Lost Bridge South area on Beaver Lake, 
is about 20 miles away from where he was last seen in Cassville. So now the missing persons investigation has turned into a murder investigation, which means digging more into his life. And even though everything looked pretty good on the surface, there were some aspects of his life that could point to a motive for foul play. Of course, you always have to look at the ex. Like I said, they had just divorced again, and though it was amicable, it sounds like things were probably kind of messy. In the divorce, his ex had gotten custody of their eight kids, although she says John was still a very loving and involved dad. He had been ordered by the court to pay alimony and child support totaling nearly $19,000 a month. Now, before you freak out, his family says that that amount of money wasn't that big of a deal for him. John apparently was pretty rich. He was once mentioned in a Forbes article and described as a Bitcoin millionaire. And that might actually exclude her as a suspect because killing him would mean cutting off that very comfortable revenue stream. But that also points to the one part of his life that could be a little on the sketchy side. Like I said before, he and his brother Richard had founded a cryptocurrency called Onfo. The way it supposedly works is that users earn coins by referring others to the platform, a deal they call network mining, or what others might call a pyramid scheme. Now, there hasn't been much reported about Onfo, so there isn't any evidence yet that he did anything shady enough to inspire murder. But it's just something I think we should keep our eyes on. And then there's the questions about what he was doing on the day of his disappearance. Why was he meeting someone in a remote location? Why did he have so many cell phones? It's the kind of thing that's giving drug dealer. And then there's this. According again to Richard, about a year before his murder, John had supposedly been kidnapped. Richard said that he only learned about this through a mutual friend of theirs who wishes to remain anonymous. So, Richard says that the anonymous friend said it was cold, he was zip-tied, he was made to feel very unsafe and taken on a car ride with some people to a bridge and was threatened. Richard says his brother never filed a police report because he feared for his safety. Richard told the Daily Mail that he believes the incident was crypto-related, but he wasn't clear on the details as to why. And this is why I'm kind of squinting at Richard. He's pretty much the only one who's been talking to the media, and he's been talking a lot. He's the only one who's giving out any information, so he's kind of in control of the narrative. Like, his description of the surveillance footage has changed slightly as he's told it to different news outlets. And he's also John's business partner in a notoriously shady business. And before any of you crypto bros come after me, that's just the fact. It's totally unregulated by design, so the whole crypto sphere is absolutely infested with scammers. Were the two of them scamming people and someone decided to get their money back in blood? Or did Richard want his brother out of the way so he could keep all the profits to himself? I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I'm just asking questions. So anyway, that's where the case stands as of the time I'm filming this, about two months after his murder. It's still early, of course, so I'm going to be keeping my eye on this one. Something tells me there is a lot more to this case. So what do you think about this case? Had you heard about it before? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure and give it a like and subscribe for more terrible stories like this one. Till next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more. You can help me make more true crime content by supporting me on Patreon, where for as little as a cup of coffee, you can get early access to videos, bonus content, and free Murder Nerd merch. The link is in the description.